as a kid. I saw them a little while ago when the child wasn't here. The child is here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to the Cape Elizabeth Zoning Board of Appeal meeting for August 28, 2009. I guess this is the home edition. <coughs> we call it the home edition? Yeah. This edition. Uh, I'd like to start out the roll call by self-introduction, please. Uh, Jim Walsh. Peter Howe. Jay Chatmans. John Thibodeau. David Johnson. I'm Weatherby. I'm Bruce. Well, I mean, we do have a quorum of five board members present. Present. The first order of business is approval of the February 24th minutes. Is there any comments? Move approval. I have one brief comment if this won't cause too much trouble for the secretary is the misspelling of my last name. It's it's M A S and it's that way most of the time, but in several instances it's spelled M U S and that oh, like okay, this. I'm very sorry. I'll correct you. That's okay. It's very common, but it's M A S is the ending of that. Do I have a motion for approval? So move. Seconded. All those in favor of members who are present at the at the meeting? Aye. 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 Minutes approved. Uh, there's no old business for this evening. There is one item of new business slash old business. The first item on the agenda is to hear the request. And I should point out this is a re-request of Josh and Aaron Hurley, 3 Ironclad Road, Tax Map U. 08 lot 1A for the extension of the already granted variances uh, for front setback variance of nine feet from the required 25 feet to construct a second floor deck and a second floor addition at 16 feet from set property line and a left side property line variance of 19 feet for a second floor deck at six feet from set property line. This variance was originally submitted reviewed and approved on February the 28th of 2008. Ordinance does state that the variance granted is valid for one year. Uh, so that would have expired on February 28th of 2009. This is somewhat of a formality. I'd like to, uh, for the benefit of the board and the audience, I'd like <coughs> Mr. Smith to uh, review the point out the situation and explain from a ordinance standpoint what we're faced with. Well, from the, from the ordinance standpoint, it does say that the board may grant one extension for up to one additional year. It doesn't tell us how we do that, except that we do know that all meetings have to be in a public forum and have to be advertised. So I didn't see any alternative but to, but to uh, do what we would do on, on a, as a normal meeting. So that's what I did. Um, the situation with the, uh, with the Hurleys, uh, that, that, that um, there, is, there has been no change to the area that would reflect, reflect this. As I did, you know, I do know the history of the area, and this, that everything's the same. So there shouldn't be any need to review uh, any of the points that were passed before based on, on what was submitted for surroundings. So. Um, it basically is a formality in that in that respect. Were they re were they required to resubmit any type of variance or just a, a request for an just a request a written request? Um, in fact, we didn't even we didn't charge uh, the applicant. Maybe we should have, but this is the first time this has happened. So I figured they paid once. And, and in this situation, for new variances, I know that it's standard town policy to send notices to neighbors. Would, was this indeed yes. reissued on their behalf? All the same format was used as, as if it was a new, uh, uh, new variance. All the neighbors got, got the, uh, the, uh, the agenda. Okay. And uh, I did have one call from a gentleman that lives up in the area who just asked if it was uh, the same thing as what it was a year ago. And I said yes. He said, okay, I'm all set. So I didn't hear from anybody else. So you did hear one response, and that was yes. simply a request? Yes. And then 
if this is approved, would it take effect for an additional one year from, and if so, is it from February 28th of this year, or is it from today, or should we establish that? I knew that? you were going to ask that. <laughs> um, I would say, I would say it, it, you probably get an extension from the date it was approved, February 28th, so the clock the clock would t start ticking retroactive because otherwise somebody could wait till the one year, one the day, one into in the second year and, and then get an additional year. So, so it if it is approved, it would be approved to February 28th of 2010, is that correct? Yes. Okay. So it would start, the clock would start ticking from one year from the original approval date? Yes. One additional year? Okay. Yes. With that preliminary, would either Mr. and Ms. Hurley step to the podium, please? And if you would, for the benefit of the audience, for us in the audience at home and for the record, would you just give us a nutshell of what your intentions are? Please? Oh, sure. Uh, basically, we are uh, requesting um, an extension, one year extension, as you uh, uh, heard uh, they'll grant us till the end of February for the variances already approved uh, in uh, February 28th, uh, 2008. And you have no no changes whatsoever from your original plan? Uh, none that would require any variance changes. Any questions from board members? I guess I had one question. Um, the letter um, your letter, Josh, speaks of a third floor deck. Yep. Uh, yeah, the uh, language, and this was, um, I don't, I think it was reflected um, on what was officially approved. If you looked at the minutes um, of, that were approved for the 28th meeting of 2008, um, what somebody had pointed out at that hearing, uh, that uh, it's actually a third floor deck, not a second floor deck. Um, in the um, initial notice that was sent out uh, February uh, 2008, it was called a second floor deck, but somebody here referred to, I'm not sure who it was, said it's actually a third floor deck. So that's why I refer to it as a third floor deck, because I think that was officially in the minutes what was um, passed by the board. Okay, so but it, but it, is it, it a third floor deck? Yeah, but Josh, if you could explain what your intention is, you are going to do something a little bit different. Yep, uh, basically uh, it wouldn't require variance, but what we're going to do is uh, there's not enough headroom in the uh, basement there, so to uh, basically be able to uh, use it uh, full height, ceiling height, instead of right now, which is, I don't know how to describe it, multi-layered, funny, house built by Jack kind of thing. Um, <laughs> so it, it'll be a level floor. It's the floor, contours of the floor. geography of the particular location. Yeah, exactly. It fits the uh, rugged shoreline <laughs> contours, exactly. Plus there's a river running through it as well. Yeah, and the river running through it, exactly. So it would be a normal basement that you could, uh, you know, uh, feel safe in storing things in and so forth. Um, so it would uh, be brought up about three feet in height um, uh, so that we go up. The alternative is to go down, which would require blasting or uh, uh, drilling or something, things the neighbors wouldn't like. Yeah. So that eliminates effectively what you're going to do on the... Uh, the third floor, I think we're going to, um, I, I talked to Bruce about this, we're probably not going to do, because we're basically trying to, uh, the reason why we uh, waited so long was that it, for cost reasons, we, we just couldn't get it into budget. We're probably going to eliminate the third floor deck. But what I didn't want to do was complicate this more by saying, okay, I want you guys to approve everything but this and then open up the whole thing again. So that's why I put it back in there. I don't think the third floor deck would still um, put us over the 35 feet. But in the plans that we have right now, we're probably not going to do it. Yeah. So was that issue originally discussed at your previous variance request? Uh, the, the deck? The, the change that you just were discussing? Uh, the uh, basement level? No. No, we didn't uh, describe uh, going up to three feet in the basement level. That's something that uh, the builder that we talked to okay. now. That does not affect the exterior profile in any way. Uh, well, it makes the house a bit taller, about three feet taller. It doesn't, it doesn't, there, there's nothing, there's no, no additional floor space okay. per se that would need a variance. Yep. So, and the height it's is exactly still, the way it was before. Yep. And the height is still within limits. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I said. So basically, it doesn't need nothing that we're doing would require um, the changes in the plan wouldn't require any more variances from you guys. It would be well within the code uh, that exists now. And as a practical matter, th this has to be done to this property. Oh, oh yeah. For it to be 
it all <laughs> utilized. Cool. Yeah, and that's what the builder pointed out to us. I mean, the uh, the prior builder, I think, was sort of hoping that you know you could build a house on a shaky foundation. And <laughs> the new builder said, I could do it cheaper, but I'm just not going to build a house on a lousy foundation. So, and then I think it really does need it. Any other question? Uh, is it your intent to proceed soon? Yes. Yep. Uh, basically, have the bank um, appraisal process, so forth. Hopefully, within the next month, we'll have it. That's uh, fine. My reason for asking that is uh, apparently, according to the ordinance, this is your second and last chance at this. Yes. Yes. Yep. And and so you do have until February with uh, apparently, my understanding, no further extensions. So. Yep. Okay. Yep. Any other comment? Thank you. Thank you. see no one else in the audience for comments, so we'll close the floor for public discussion. Uh, <coughs> any discussion within comment from the board member? And Mr. Smith, you, this is all, you're familiar with the plan, so everything is yes. accordingly appropriate. Thank you. Uh, I think at this point we simply need a motion to extend the existing variance that was granted on February 28, 2008 for one additional year from February 28, 2008 to 2009. If someone would like to restate that, feel free. <laughs> Otherwise, the motion is as said. We've got to restate it right here. I can't restate that. Do we have Do we have a second? Is that appropriate? To yes. Yes. So I just, just so I'll moved. second it. So in that case, second. Yeah. All those in favor? It did pass unanimously by a vote of five. To <clears throat> nothing. Good luck again. Yeah. <laughs> we'll give the baby back now. Welcome, Quinn. <laughs> Welcome to Quinn. <laughs> Welcome. Good. Thank you for um, coming. Mr. Chairman, I don't, I don't know whether it, it, it's appropriate, but it, it just appears that there's, there's a lack of an administrative procedure for this type of thing that I don't know who we request some clarification or a recommendation to. Is it the planning board or is it to the town council? Because it seems to me that administratively these types of things probably should have some mechanism clearly stated in writing so that one doesn't necessarily have to go to this level of... Well, I, I don't think you could do that in, unless you, unless you ex the original approval is longer. I mean, it, it has to be a time frame. Yeah. And like I said, everything has to be advertised. It, this meeting has to be... The public has to have input. And, and if you do it any other way, um, then the public may not have the input they want or need. Uh, so, I mean, I could check with the attorney, but I don't see any way, other way around it. Even even for an unchanged extension, I think that's a valid question. That's the question I have: is if it, there's no change to the extension, and for whatever reason, it could have been an economic reason, hardship, could have been a change of the family condition, it could have been a number of things. Uh, just getting the contractor you wanted to have do the work. I got to, you know, there's some guys you got to wait a year in order to get them to do the work. I can check with the attorney. Yeah. I, I just think, that, you know, for a lot of reasons, and you, you'd already committed to your proper notification to the public, and unfortunately it was difficult to retract yourself to administrative vote privately, you know. Um, but See, I, 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 I really don't believe that can happen because it's, this is a quasi-judicial board. Yeah. And it has to, the opportunity has to be there for the citizens, whether it's a formality or not. Um, I think it's, you know, that's the yeah. principle, the basic for, for, for how the board operates. Um, Except that you could, you could um, put in place um, a major um, reapplication fee that would allow an administrative decision. I mean, if these guys wound up having to pay it still has to be in a public forum, though. You can't, you can't, you well, can't. Well, 
Uh, I, you know, again, I just, I just think it's a. I, I don't have a problem. Does that contact the attorney? But I really don't think this. I think this is the way it has to be. Does this flow from state statute or from local? You know, both. both. Did, did everything. All the rules are based on state, state law. So it really flows from state statute. I'll certainly, but, I'll certainly run it by the attorney. Yeah. To okay. See if we. Can. But the reality is, they could have, um, they could have put a shovel in the ground sometime during the year. Right. and effectively okay. extended this system. without having to come here. Uh, right. No, no, because no? you have to be substantially complete within, uh -huh. or there's wording in there that covers that. Yeah. <clears throat> I guess the other problem with not noticing it for the public is what if we had a situation like we had tonight and there were people who had, had issue with it and said, you've blown your, you, you've mm. blown your one year thing. You, you know, you need to you need to reapply before the one year runs, so forever hold your peace. I think it's unlikely if it went through the first time, but yeah, for, there might be something that suggests that you know you need to give everyone a chance to be heard. Yeah, I could. I certainly. It would it'd be good to get an answer. Um, yeah, I can't remember now what the wording is, but I'll, I'll run it by the attorneys and see if we can. So if it comes up again, it, maybe there's a way to do it. Since the request has been made, if, if I think it may be worthwhile if you did ask the attorney. Yep. And <coughs> only in the rare situation where there is no change and no, well, just no change in the original variance. Did they have to pay a new fee, an additional fee to extend? What? Did they have to pay any additional fee to no, extend? I, I, just, I was just going to say, I wonder if we need to be considering, you know, a fee for renewal or <laughs> extension. I mean, theoretically, we should, there should have probably been a $150, but I, this is the first time that sure. it's happened. And, because uh, there, I mean, there was, part of the administrative yep, there, there, fee is to pay for administrative costs, so yep. that may be worth looking into also. Um, there are no other items on the agenda, no communications. I did have one comment that I'd like to throw out to the board, and that is the uh, regarding notice, uh, attendant or board meeting notice. Uh, the, the secretary is very diligent in sending us out uh, agendas when appropriate and cancellations when appropriate. Uh, some board members respond, some board members by email to reply to all, and some respond to none at all. I think it would be a good idea if each board member would respond, and I would suggest that it be a reply to sender, not a reply to everyone, because the mailing list includes uh, the town manager, the dispatcher, police, mm -hmm. video, and everything else. And I'm not sure they need to see all of the back and forth among all board members. Well, I can't come, but I, you know, and so on and so forth. You know what I'm talking about. May I, I'd like to open it for discussion. If, if I would like to see that each board member reply yes or no, reply simply to the secretary or to Bruce, that uh, whatever the decision is, not reply to all saying that I will be in attendance or I will not, and have an, inf have an informal role call so that we won't be surprised in the event that someone is unable to show up and we're waiting for a quorum and don't have one. I'd like to, I think we'd all like to know that in advance. Any comments on that? Makes, makes sense to me. Makes sense to me as well. It's fine. Sounds good. Good. And again, I would encourage everybody not to hit reply to all. I mean, you're certainly welcome to send it to other board members. I just think it gets carried away when the website and dispatcher and everybody else is notified of all of these, and I'm sure they don't care. They don't want their inbox. So uh, if, if we could institute a policy where all board members reply, is the secretary okay? Well, whoever. Uh, whoever yeah, sent out? Or do you want to come to you? Or It should come to the office. The office. Whether it be me or Annico, you can answer Annico because she sends it out. So we can. We're the ones that, that would would reply to the sender. Members yeah. if, if we were yeah. shot. Instead of reply to all, simply click reply to sender with a yes or no. I will be in attendance. Mm -hmm. uh, next 
board meeting is scheduled for Tuesday, May the 26th. Any other comments by board? If not, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Have a good meeting. I have a motion. I move to adjourn. Second. I have a second. Second. All those in favor? I can't believe it. Thank you. I can't.